Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miriam. I don't know if you know it, it's a great lady. This is a great lady. This is a great one. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, let's sit down. Let's talk about Israel, or Israel, as they say. I love the pronunciation. I love it. But uh, you really are. You're a great lady, a great woman, my friend. And uh, I've known you and Sheldon for a long time. We lost Sheldon. And nobody like him, right? You would say that. Nobody like him, but uh, nobody like you either. And he's very proud of you right now. Thank you very much. And I'd also like to thank Rabbis Yehuda Kaplun and Yaakov Kaplun, Senators Rick Scott, doing well. Where's Rick? He's doing well. I saw Paul, and another one who's doing well is Ted Cruz. Ted, stand up, Ted. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. And Lindsay doesn't have to do well because he's got another few years to go before he runs. It's something nice about that. But Lindsey Graham is terrific, terrific guy. Bill Haggerty, who's fantastic. Bill, thank you very much. And Joni Ernst. Who is Joni Ernst? Joni, thank you very much, Joni. Great. Doing a great job. Those farmers love Joni. I'll tell you, she was tough, right? With She came to see me, and I thought I made a deal, and then she said, no, no, no. We want more, more, more. But that's what you're supposed to have, right? Good job, Joni. And you got it. Former Senator Norm Coleman. Norm, thank you. Thank you, Norm. You look good. And a spectacular person, Elise Stefanak. Spectacular. What she did to that woman at Harvard with the big, big fat glasses. That woman had no idea what was happening. That was beautiful to watch, actually. A friend of mine, Carlos Jimenez. Carlos, thank you, Carlos. Got a lot of power here. There's a lot of power here, you know? This is like the old days. Because frankly, uh, there's been a movement going on. I call it AOC plus three, but the plus three is a lot more. And we have to end that. We have to end it. We have to end it fast. I've never seen anything like it. John Carter, please. John, where's John? Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Good job. Mario Diaz Ballart. Mario, thank you. Thank you, Mario. Byron Donalds. Boy, he's a popular guy. He is. And he's a great guy with a great future. Good. I didn't see you back there. You didn't. He has so many pictures with me, he didn't need a picture. <laughs> he, knows, he doesn't want another picture. Ronnie Jackson. What a great guy. <laughs> Think of this. He was an admiral, a great admiral, respected by everybody. Then he became the White House doctor, took care of maybe Bush a little bit and Obama, right? And then Trump. And they asked him, who's the most healthy of the group? And he said, not even a contest. Who? Trump. Trump. In fact, he said Trump would live for 200 years if he didn't eat junk food. <laughs> I don't know if I like that, but that was OK. A uh, great doctor. Now he's a really popular congressman, and he's our friend. And when I had a little ear problem, he was there. He, he literally came from Texas, and he did a great job, and I appreciate it very much, Ron. Thank you. Because once you're a doctor, you're always a doctor, even if you're a congressman, I guess, right? Don't you think? Somebody who's been really uh, spectacular, for, especially for the last few months. I don't know what happened to him, but boy, he likes me a lot better now than he used to. Michael Lawler. Am I correct in that? Where's Michael? Right? Something happened. 
But he likes me better now than he used to, and I like that because he's a good man, great man. Mike Flood, Mike, thank you. Virginia Fox. Virginia. Thank you, Virginia. Michael Waltz, who's doing a great job in defending all of us on television. He's doing a great job on television. And a spectacular woman, a beautiful woman. I'm not allowed to say that anymore because, you know, it usually puts you out of politics, but I've said much worse than that. But she's a beautiful woman, and she really is with the most incredible family. And she came to me about endorsing someone in her area who had no chance, and I said, okay, we'll do it. Against an incumbent Republican that I didn't like very much and probably didn't like me. So we took a chance, Mary, didn't we? Mary Miller, we took a chance, and our candidate won in a landslide, right? So that was great. We don't like having to do that, but in that case, we had no choice. Ambassador Lana Marks, who was terrific. Thank you, Lana. Good job. You did a great job as ambassador. West Virginia Treasurer Riley Moore. Thank you, Riley. Thank you. Going on to very big things, actually. Jacob Helberg. Jacob, thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Great job. Somebody who's very talented, knows a lot about a lot at a very young age, Morgan Ortegas. Morgan. Thank you, darling. And also somebody who defends me so well, Elizabeth Pipko. Elizabeth. Wow. I watched you last night, Elizabeth. You were brutal to this other person. They didn't, they didn't have a chance last night, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We need all the defense we can get. And a friend of mine and a man who's actually a great environmentalist, he really is a great one, and he wrote a book on Donald Trump as a great environmentalist, which is actually true, but a lot of people don't know that. But I'm an environmentalist with common sense. I like buildings that have windows. You know, they'd like to close up all windows. The building should be built 90 stories tall, but that doesn't matter, but can't have any windows. Uh, the things they're doing with the Green New scam is just unbelievable. 97 trillion. How can we, can we do that, Ted? I think that's very doable. 97 trillion. Most people don't know what that means. Nobody knows. Nobody's ever heard of a number. To do the Green New scam the way they want it. 97, that's more than China, the United States, and every country in the world for the next 200 years has. But they go along with it anyway. But he is, he's a great gentleman and a friend of mine, Ed Russo. Where is Ed? I'll tell you, that's great that Ed is here. Wow. Before we begin, I just want to mention some polls that just came out. And I've decided to go back to doing this because they never release the polls when they're good. And they've been really good. And they don't release them. And unless one comes out, they had one that came out the other day where they uh, interviewed 51 percent Democrat, 22 percent Republican. Trump's down by six. I said, how the hell can you win on a poll like that? When you're down by, like, uh, they interview 40% more Democrats, and then they say, if you're down by six, that means you're actually winning by about 15. But uh, we don't go with that. But we do go with the respected polls. And we go with polls because they don't want to release them because they've all been pretty good. In the very, very, I think, accurate poll over the last nine or 10 years, I think Rasmussen's been really one of the best. And it was just released a little while ago. I'm leading by eight points against a woman that cannot, you cannot, especially you cannot allow to happen. I mean, you know, honestly, you are generally Jewish people. We have a lot of good Christians there that love Israel, by the way. In many ways, they love Israel more than Jewish people love Israel, which is shocking, but nevertheless, we'll take it, right? We have a lot of great Christians that love Israel, but we're up by eight with Rasmussen. We're at 52 to 44, so that's a big one. And we're up by 11 with independence uh, in Rasmussen also. Just came out. That's a lot because, uh, as you know, Rick Scott, we were talking about it a little while. And independents are very important. And when you're up by that number, that's a pretty good thing. Then the Emerson poll, highly respected. We're up in Arizona. We're up in Wisconsin. And we're up substantially in Pennsylvania. And those are the three that they did. 
And in the New York Times poll even, which is shocking because, you know, I wouldn't say they love me. I wouldn't say I love them either. But I'm up by nine in the Midwest. That's a big one. And the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, we're up by at least three in Georgia. And CNN has us up. I love seeing like a CNN and then we're up. Boy, cause so if you're up five, you're probably up 20 or something. <laughs> but in CNN, we're up five in Arizona. The Daily Express poll has us up five in all of the battleground states, which is great. So I say 47 days from now, we're going to defeat Kamala Harris. You have to defeat Kamala Harris. More than any other people on Earth, Israel, I believe, has to defeat her. You know that? I, I, and I've never said this before. I'm thinking, Miriam, more than any people on Earth, Israel has to defeat her. I really believe that it's a disaster for Israel. And you know why, and you've heard her statements. We're going to take back our country, and we're going to make Israel great again, and we're going to make America great again. We're going to make them both great again, greater than ever before. We've gathered today to talk about the scourge of anti-Semitism tonight. We're two weeks away from the one-year anniversary of the worst attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust, without question. On October 7th, which would have never happened if I was president, by the way, I have to always preface it by saying it would have never, ever happened. Innocent men, women, children, and babies were tortured, maimed, kidnapped, and killed. It was an amazing sight, especially if you were able to see and you don't want to necessarily see it, some of the tapes and film that was made of the atrocity. It was a wake-up call for the entire world, and you have to take it that it is a wake-up call. Get smart. Instead, even here in America, Jewish citizens have been forced to endure the worst outbreak of anti-Semitism in many generations. And so many people shockingly even deny the attack took place. This is a new thing. I saw it recently where they're interviewing people. They said, well, we don't know if there was an attack. I don't know. It's just so terrible. And, you know, there were people I read many times during the Holocaust, we had people denying it. They were deniers. They said, we don't believe it ever took place. And it's a terrible thing when they say that. I never thought I would see anything like what is happening right now. I never thought you'd ever see a thing like this ever happen. You would, it's beyond, it's beyond belief. You know, 15 years ago, Israel was the strongest Lobby, if you want to use the word lobby, had the strongest representation of people like this. These are great people, Miriam. But the strongest there was, if you said something about a Jewish person or something about Israel that was bad, you were out of politics. Unless your name was Ted Cruz, he could, he could get through. I think Ted could get through, but maybe not. Maybe even Ted. But it's true. You said something about Israel that was bad. It was like, today, you have to fight. We all have to fight for Israel. I just never, I, I am so surprised to see it, but we're going to win the fight, so don't worry about it, okay? We'll win the fight. There are those that say it's very much uh, like a long time ago when you could say anything, but all across our land, you've seen Jewish Americans harassed and attacked and terrorized by anti Semites and Hamas sympathizers. I can't believe what we've been witnessing over the last year. Actually, I've watched it in great detail. I've watched it, and I've watched it take place. It's hard to believe. Yet, despite presiding over this explosion of anti-Semitism, Kamala Harris has done absolutely nothing. She has not lifted a single finger to protect you or to protect your children or to even protect you with words. I'm here today to tell the Jewish American community that this ugly tide of anti-Semitic pro-Hamas bigotry and hate will be turned back and crushed starting at noon on January 20th, 2025. Thank you. Thank you. It will be a bright new day for the Jewish community in America. No longer will you have to walk the streets in fear. You're walking the streets in fear. Can you believe it? 
young college students are afraid to go to college. It's not something that anybody thought they would ever hear or see. No longer will you be threatened on your college campuses. No longer will you be discriminated against in college admissions. And no longer will your own government import jihadists from places that we don't even want to talk about. And they want Jew haters from overseas, and they let them come in and resettle in your communities right here at home, and nobody's ever seen anything like it. My promise to Jewish Americans is this. With your vote, I will be your defender, your protector, and I will be the best friend Jewish Americans have ever had in the White House. You know that. Thank you. But in all fairness, I already am. I think I already am. Uh, I don't have to think. In fact, I already am. I am the best defender you've had as president by far. I think it would be no question. Uh, Miriam mentioned four or five of the things. Those are each individual thing. Oh, her husband would drive me crazy. You have to do this. You have to do that. You don't know what I had to put up with. She was like the calming influence. I said, Sheldon, I can't do that. It's too much. He said, no, no. And every time I got something, he'd immediately start with something else, right? He'd get something oh, always fighting for Israel and the Jewish people. But, you know, I had such great respect for it. It's true, though. She had to sometimes tell him, calm down. You just had a big victory. Let's celebrate. No, no, we have to immediately start. Let's see if we can do Golan Heights. How about Golan Heights? They've been trying to get it for 72 years. I got it done in about 15 minutes, okay? So. Even Sheldon couldn't believe that one, I'll tell you. Even Sheldon couldn't believe that one. He said, we just got Golan Heights. They didn't even ask for it. I actually gave you that one. You didn't ask for it, but I thought it was important. Ground zero for the outbreak of the anti-Jewish hate under Kamala Harris has been our college campuses. At UCLA a few months ago, Marxist thugs dressed up like terrorists and created, quote, Jew exclusion zones blocking Jewish students from entering parts of the campus. Can you imagine that? A week after the October 7th attack on Israel, anti-Semites at Miami University in Ohio sent Jewish students and staff an email that said, quote, the best Jew is a dead Jew, end of quote. This is stuff that's not even thinkable. And the colleges do nothing about it, too. Most of them. At Barrow College, a mob of Hamas Supporters targeted a group of innocent Jewish freshmen at a welcoming dinner, shouted slurs and mocked them for the death of Jewish hostages in Israel. At Princeton University, radical activists displayed the Hezbollah flag very proudly. At Columbia, you watched that along with everybody else. It was terrible. They took control of the school buildings, these magnificent buildings. They beat the hell out of them, by the way. And the campus became so dangerous for Jewish students that the university rabbi told them, please go home, go home. A Yale professor called October 7th an extraordinary day. It was a great day, he said. A Cornell professor said that these heinous attacks were, quote, exhilarating and energizing to everyone. Kamala Harris said that the radical demonstrators on college campuses were, quote, Human emotion should be this way. This is her message. This is somebody that's among two people. So we started off with 350 million. Of course, we really don't know how many people we have in the country anymore. They're coming in so fast at the border. Many criminals, many from jails, prisons, many from mental institutions, from insane asylums, terrorists. They're pouring in at levels we've never seen before. And she was the border czar. She now says she wasn't, but she was still in charge of the border. She's the one that did it. And I will tell you, the message that she gave is wrong. It's dangerous, and it's unbefitting a candidate for the president of the United States. So think of it. Three, let's assume 350 million. We're down to two. 
I told our great first lady the other day, well, we're down to two, and now we're leading in the polls by, I think, a lot. I'm calling on Kamala Harris to officially disavow the support of all Hamas sympathizers, anti-Semites, Israel haters, on college campuses and everywhere else. So I'm calling on her to do that, just disavow. But she won't do it. You know that. She's not going to do it. She's going to talk. She's going to talk, talk, talk about nothing, talk about the weather. And sadly, and I have to say this, and it hurts me to say it, you're going to still vote for Democrats, and it doesn't make sense. I say all the time that any Jewish person that votes for her especially now, her or the Democrat Party should have their head examined. It's true. And, you know, I just find it so hard to believe, and part of it is habit, I guess. And respectfully, with all that I've done, I'll maybe go over it quickly, but Miriam did it better than I could, all the different things with Golan, with all of the things that we did. And really, the one thing we didn't mention is I terminated the Iran nuclear deal. And that is, I think, the, the biggest of them all. But thank you. the problem is, we could have had a deal, any deal we wanted. Michael knows that better than anybody. But Biden and Harris, and nobody knows it. You know, when you say Harris, people say, who's Harris? You have to say Kamala, because nobody knows who the hell Harris is. That's her last name. But nobody knows it. Isn't it weird? How's Harris doing? Who the hell is Harris? How's Kamala doing? Oh, isn't it as weird? I never saw anything like it. So we'll just call it Kamala. But you really, uh, you know, when you think about it, it's, uh, it's amazing that you're such nice people, because a lot of people wouldn't allow that to happen. We're joined today by several dozen Jewish American students from colleges across America. Thank you all for being here. And here is what I will do to defeat anti-Semitism and defend our Jewish citizens in America. My first week back in the Oval Office, my administration will inform every college president that if you do not end anti-Semitic propaganda, they will lose their accreditation and federal tax <laughs> support. Thank you. Truth is, you don't have to do much after that. Will you do that? It's going to work miracles. Please sit down. We will not subsidize the creation of terrorist sympathizers, and uh, we're not going to do it, certainly, on American soil. We're not going to do it anywhere. Next, I will inform every educational institution in our land that if they permit violence, harassment, or threats against Jewish students, the schools will be held accountable for violations of the civil rights law. It's very important. Jewish Americans must have equal protection under the law. They're going to get it. At the same time, my administration will move swiftly to restore safety for Jewish students and Jewish people on American streets. Jews have been beaten on their way to synagogue in Los Angeles just recently. Beaten on their way. Jewish American businesses have been vandalized. Yet once again, the Harris-Biden administration has done absolutely nothing about it, doesn't even comment. Here in Washington, radical Hamas supporters tore down the American flag in front of Union Station, set it on fire, and hoisted the Palestinian flag while police officers and spray painting, they were spray painting at police officers and at the beautiful monument surrounding the area and the flag, lions, people. And it was a, you know, being in the construction business, uh, this is a stone, it's limestone, that when you spray paint limestone, 
You'll see it in 100 years. They can take it off, but they can't really take it off. You'll see everything that they said in 100 years. It's a very porous stone. And what they've done is unbelievable. But I don't see them getting long sentences in prison like happened to other people. I don't see them even being approached or attacked in any way. They allow them to do it. But watch those limestones. I looked at them the other day, and uh, that stone just, it just sucks up that paint. It goes deep. You're going to see it in 100 years from now. Kamala Harris, let them go. She said, let them go. I will end this political violence and harassment once and for all. You know, when I was president, we had a moment where Washington was, uh, in a sense, being attacked. They were trying to pull down statues, and I pulled out an old, about an 1897 uh, statute, very important, and it said that anybody touching, ripping down, or even trying to rip down a monument or a statue in the Capitol or anywhere else in the land up to the president will get 10 years in jail, no probation, no nothing. It's 10 years. It's not 10 years, but you serve three days. It's 10 years and you serve all 10 years. You couldn't get a thing like that passed today, I don't think. What do you think, Ted? Not, not, too, not too easily. If you, got, if you got two days, it would be a miracle. No, it's 10 years. It was so old. I lifted up this. It was old and dusty, but it read beautifully. And I invoked it, and I had a speech. I said, here's the story. Anybody touching a statue, and it ended when they had Abraham Lincoln ready to be pulled over. You remember that? They said, Abraham Lincoln, now we're hitting Lincoln. And I read it, and I told people that anybody from this moment on that pulls down anything or even tries to pull down a statue, you go into jail for 10 years. And it was an amazing sight, Miriam. Everybody just dropped the ropes. The ropes were left. They dropped the ropes and they started walking out of town. I was watching thousands of asses from the back. And it was a beautiful sight. It was a beautiful sight. It was a beautiful sight. They just started walking in a different direction. And that was the last of the problem we had. Remember the big problems we were having? They actually wanted to rip down Thomas Jefferson Memorial. They didn't like Jefferson. They didn't like Washington. They didn't like Lincoln. They didn't like anybody. I will oppose and I will make sure that you're protected. I will oppose all of the horrible things that they're thinking of doing. And they are thinking of doing bad things. It's not believable. I will also secure our borders from dangerous anti-American and anti-Semitic hate. Not only has Kamala thrown open our southern border, and again, she was in charge of your border. Now she's trying to say, well, I wasn't really. I wasn't really the border czar. I never heard her disavow border czar before. But open to terrorists and criminals, she's supported unlimited migration from terrorist hotbeds into the United States, especially some of the hotbeds that most hate Israel. Under Bordezar Harris, armies of foreign Hamas sympathizers now march brazenly through our cities. They're, they're literally marching in our cities, and they, are, they came from some very... Uh, very vicious, violent parts of the world. And they do not like Jewish people, and they do not like Israel. And they've let that be known, and we are not going to tolerate it. I will not let what happened to Paris, what happened to London, and what's happening to them, too, by the way. That's not over. What happened to Brussels happened here in America. It's not going to happen. We will deport the foreign jihad sympathizers and Hamas supporters from our midst. We will get them out of our country. I will ban refugee resettlement from terror-infested areas like the Gaza Strip. And we will seal our border and bring back the travel ban. Remember the famous travel ban? We didn't take people from certain areas of the world because I didn't want to have people ripping down and burning our shopping centers and killing people. But we're not taking them from infested countries. We will quickly rebuild the greatest economy in the history of the world for Jewish Americans and for all Americans. It will happen very quickly. We will defeat inflation, cut energy costs in half, and we will have something that some people in this room would be interested in, and frankly, some won't. But I'll say it anyway, because you got those television cameras blaring. 
no tax on tips, no tax on overtime, and no tax on Social Security benefits for our seniors. That's a good one for this room. This room likes that last one. And to help Americans who are buried in crushing credit card debt under the Kamala Harris economy, we will have a temporary 10 percent cap on credit card interest rates because they're paying 20 and 25 percent and they're getting decimated. So it'll be a temporary uh, 10 percent cap. But look, this is the most important election in the history of the United States, and it's also the most important election in the history of Israel. The United States election is the most important election in the history of Israel, actually, if you think about it. How crazy does that sound? But it's true. With all I have done for Israel, I received only 24 percent of the Jewish vote. Now, think of this. Uh, I really haven't been treated very well, but that's the story of my life. <laughs> it's true. Think of it. But I understood that because I wasn't really tested. I wasn't a politician and I won, but I understood that. And then I became president and was the best president ever for the people of Israel and for Jewish people, the best president ever. And I did more for them than any president has and probably any president can do or will do other than the current situation that's coming up, because I have a feeling that maybe that's going to be more than anything that was even done in the past, if you want to know the truth, because I think Israel's in big trouble. But I gave them, as Mir said, Golan Heights. I gave them the Abraham Accords, which is amazing. <laughs> Nobody thought that was possible. Four strong, powerful countries signed. Think of it. I would have had every country signed. I might have even had Iran signed, okay? As crazy as that sounds, you're, you're kidding. You know that, Michael. I might have even had that. But we had peace in the Middle East. When I left, we had peace in the Middle East, but I had the Abraham Accords. And it was something that if Obama had done it, that would have been any prize. You named the prize, but I, they would have had every single prize ever devised by man. I did it. Nobody, <laughs> nobody said a thing. And that's okay. I do the right thing. And I was helped a lot by Jared and a lot of other people that really uh, understood what was going on. But I recognized the capital of Israel and opened the embassy in Jerusalem <laughs> and got it built. Not just had it there, you know, the, the uh, generals came in one of my days in office. They said, sir, could you sign this? What is it? It said order for $2 billion to be spent on a embassy that would have cost much more. I said, where's the land? We don't have it yet, sir, but we have a couple of terrible sites <laughs> under negotiation. I'm good at real estate. These were bad locations in Jerusalem. I said, do we have anything? Let us look, sir. And they do. They had a site that was better than anything we had, a much better location, and we have it for nothing. So, so far, I'm doing a good job. Then I said, is there a building on it? Yes, there is, but it's not in use. I said, is it structurally sound? Oh, yes, very strong, very structurally sound. Is it setback? Because you want setbacks for embassies for things called bombs. Yes, it's setback, and it's on high. It's one of the best locations. I said, so we have it. So I dealt with David Friedman. I said, David, how much would it cost to renovate the building? Give me a good price. And he came back and said $400,000. I said, David, that's too low. This is the only time I've ever said this. <laughs> Usually I say, it's too high. Cut them in half. This time I said, that's crazy. From $2 billion, think of it, $400,000. And I said, that's too low. We got to spend more. And we ended up spending a little bit more than that, very little. And a friend of mine has, uh, a couple of you have heard this, Jerusalem stone in his office building. And every time I walk by the elevator bank, he says, look at this stone. It's Jerusalem stone, so expensive. And I said to him, very successful guy, very rich guy. And he was complaining about the price. It's Jerusalem. But every time, after 20 times, I say, don't tell me it's Jerusalem stone again. Right on the elevator bank, beautiful stone, Jerusalem stone. So I'm there and I say, listen, by any chance, Talking to one of the contractors, I said, you think you could use Jerusalem stone? Is it expensive? No, it's cheap as hell. <laughs> We're in Jerusalem. And we built the whole building out of Jerusalem stone. And we did it very inexpensively, got it opened in about four or five months. 
You would still be talking about your $2 billion building, Ted. You would, that building would be under talk for about five more years, and then they'd spend $5 billion and it would look like hell. This building is better. You'll never do better. Someday they'll rip it down and do some monster. But uh, I was very proud we got it built. And most importantly of all, um, in my opinion, because I asked, what's the best? Uh, Golan Heights, is it? Is it Jerusalem, the capital, moving the embassy and all of that? What is the best? What's the best? Is it the Abraham Accords? And some friends of mine that are very smart, no, no, not even close. The best thing you ever did for Israel is you terminated the Iran nuclear deal, which was the worst deal ever made for Israel or for any country. That was the best. That's true. That was more important. Remember, that was more important than that was more important than any of the other things, of the many other things that we did. The problem is that Harris, Kamala, and Biden did absolutely nothing with it. You could have made after the election, which we had a very bad, bad, bad thing happen with that election. Think of it. If that election were proper, you wouldn't have had Russia attacking Ukraine. You wouldn't have had October 7th. Would have never happened because, as you know, Iran had no money at that time. None. Zero. Nothing. They had no money to fund. There were stories about it, that there was no money for terror. You wouldn't have had inflation. You wouldn't have had that horrible uh, leaving of Afghanistan in such a way. Not the leaving, because we were ready to leave. We would have left before them, but we were leaving with strength and dignity. That was the worst I think it was the lowest day, the most embarrassing day in the history of our country. Because of that, probably that's why Putin went in. He would have never gone in with me, though. But all of these things, and uh, on top of everything else, I gave them more than $20 billion, Israel. And I said, uh, when I did it, I said, I'm the best friend they ever had. And still, in 2020, so remember, I got 24, 25%. Now I did all of these things, and I got 29%. Think of it. So I wasn't treated right. But it's not me that's been treating badly. It's Israel, because you can make a big difference in the vote. You're going to be a big factor in the vote. Uh, I will say places like Miami and different places were great. But honestly, I went from 25 to 29. And based on what I did and based on my love of the same love that you have, I should be at 100. I should be at 100. But, but let me give you the bad news. A poll, I just told you how the, good the polls are, but uh, we need every vote we can get. The current polling has me with Jewish citizens, Jewish people, people that's supposed to love Israel. After having done all of that, having been the best president, the greatest president by far, by far, a poll just came out. I'm at 40 percent. That means you got 60 percent voting for somebody that hates Israel. And I say it, it's going to happen. It's only because of the Democrat hold or curse on you. You can't let this happen. 40 percent is not acceptable because we have an election to win. So after all of this, I went from 29 to 40 percent. And people that are smart said to me, Friend of mine, Jewish, friend of mine loves Israel, loves everything about, about your religion and about your country, your place. He said, I can't believe it's happening. It's sad. And he started to cry, actually. He started to cry with all of this. And he's a tough cookie. I don't think he cried for since he was a little tiny baby. Maybe then I don't think he cried. I don't think he cried then, Miriam. But I will put it to you very simply and gently. I really haven't been treated right, but you haven't been treated right because you're putting yourself in great danger. And the United States hasn't been treated right. So if I don't win this election, and I've been very good. You know, they say Trump's been right about everything. I've been right about a lot of things. Even Ted will admit that. I've been right about a lot of things. A lot of things that a lot of people said, no, that won't happen. But a lot of bad things happened. And some good things I've been right about, too. And I only want to be, so I'm not going to call this as a prediction, but in my opinion, the Jewish people would have a lot to do with a loss if I'm at 40 percent. If I'm at four, think of it, that means 60 percent of voting for Kamala, who in particular is a bad Democrat. 
The Democrats are bad to Israel, very bad. They'll never change because they have a section of their party now which has become amazingly and quickly very powerful, vote-wise. I mean, Chuck Schumer is a Palestinian. Who would have thought that was going to happen? What the hell happened to him? I saw him the other day. He was dressed in one of their robes. You know. That'll be next. No, Chuck Schumer is uh, Hamas all the way. I don't know what the hell happened to him. If you support him, you're crazy. I can, I have never seen, his change may be bigger than Kamala on fracking in Pennsylvania, okay? <laughs> but if we don't win this election, Israel, in my opinion, within a period of two to three years will cease to exist. It's gonna be wiped out. That's what's gonna happen. It's a tough thing to say. But what difference does it make from my standpoint? I have to tell you the truth, and maybe you'll be energized because there's no way that I should be getting 40% of the vote. I'm the one that's protecting you. These are the people that are going to destroy you, and you, get, you have 60% of the Jewish people essentially voting for them. If I do win, Israel will be safe and secure, and we will stop the toxic poison of anti-Semitism from spreading all over America and all over the world. We'll get it stopped. But if I don't win, I believe Israel will be eradicated, and you can't let that happen. And I don't think you will let that happen. So you have to, Rabbi, you have to get everybody together, and you have to get them to vote, because it, it's craziness to say I'm at 40%. And when I heard that number today, it just came out today. When I heard that number today, I think it was insulting to our country. It was insulting to Israel. You know, it's very interesting. They did a poll in Israel. I'm like at 99% favorable. I could run for, right now, I could run for any office in Israel. I'm at, in Israel, they love me. Here, not so much. But they do love me in Israel. Miriam, I'm at 99%. Everybody loves me. I could run for prime minister. Would you like me as your prime minister? But I have to learn your language. That's a tough language to learn. <laughs> I have to learn it in about three months. I have to learn it very quickly. But no, I'm very most popular person in Israel. But here it doesn't translate. It's a, it's a strange thing. So we have to save Israel. Look, you're here for a reason. We have to save Israel. This is no longer um, games. This is no longer games. This is uh, the saving of Israel. And I'm going to mention it. We're making a big statement in a little while at another conference, also very important. And I'm going to mention it again and again. I believe that Israel will be uh, wiped off the face of the earth if I don't win. And that's a big statement. That's a horrible statement to make. And uh, it's just the way I feel. And a lot of people in this room agree with me. Because look at what's happened in the last two years. I have never seen anything like it where something has gone so down so fast, where even Jewish people are protesting in these groups. They're Jewish people. People wearing yarmulkes are in these groups that are protesting with 100,000 people. So they have to change their way because uh, with your vote, you can reject anti-Semitism in our schools, in our communities, in our foreign policy, and in our immigration system. But all of that starts by rejecting Kamala Harris at the ballot box. She is anti-Israel and she is anti-Jewish and you got to get smart to it. And with that, I have great love and great respect for so many of the people in the room. I have so many friends in this room. I fought so hard for you, but it's time that you fight the real fight. And the real fight is to save Israel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.